Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek, keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, January 12th. Tesla is taking delivery of yet another giant casting machine at Gigafactory, Texas, as the automaker moves to produce entire car bodies in just a few pieces. Tesla has been heavily investing in casting and alloy technology to greatly simplify manufacturing. Their first Gigapress was installed at the Fremont factory and was put into operation in 2020. Tesla already has started deploying more of them in Berlin, China, and now the upcoming facility in Texas, which is receiving what we believe to be the fourth unit. Jeff Roberts, who often flies drones over Gigafactory Texas, spotted the delivery this week. Although Tesla missed the goal of production in 2021, these machines will enable actual production to ramp up much faster. A new video shows how Tesla's solar roof makes snow glide right off and be able to keep producing electricity. Early installations were in markets such as California and Florida, where snow is quite rare. But now we're getting to see them in some more snowy environments. Solar panels produce some heat that can help the snow melt or slide off the roof faster by creating a layer of water to help gravity after an accumulation from a snowstorm. Jason Lassen, a new Tesla solar roof owner in Wisconsin, shared a video of his roof before and after a snowstorm. Sure enough, the snow slid right off the roof and all over the construction equipment that was left on the job site. Tesla owners are again losing heat in extremely cold weather as some heat pumps are failing badly. Around this time last year, we published a report on failing pumps. Tesla said they fixed it with a software update. The spring melted away all the worries. But now in Canada and the north of the U.S. is being hit with a new record cold temperature with several regions getting down below negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The forums and social media are full of Tesla owners reporting issues with their vehicle heating systems. Several owners are reporting being hit with a system alert and completely losing heat in the car. Some owners brought their car into service centers and were told that they are working on a software fix. Other owners are hearing that the problem could be as simple as ice affecting the front air intake near the windshield, which triggers an error. Preheating the system and manually removing the ice could be all that's required to get moving again. Late Tuesday evening, CEO Elon Musk weighed in on the controversial topic of California's solar tax proposal. On Monday, Tesla launched a web page to enable people to complain to Governor Gavin Newsom and the California Public Utilities Commission about the proposal to impose fees on solar and battery storage customers. That would make the solar storage more costly. Musk tweeted that the proposal was, quote, bizarre anti-environment move by government of California. Tesla could be forced to open the books on their full self-driving beta to the California DMV after what they called videos showing dangerous use. Although other companies are playing nice, Tesla has been able to avoid sharing their data with the DMV and has officially only logged a few hundred miles of autonomous test driving over the last seven years. Of course, we know in all reality that's not the case. Previously released communication between Tesla and the California DMV shows that the automaker asked the DMV to be exempt from the autonomous test reporting because full self-driving beta requires driver supervision at all times. The DMV decided to review their acceptance of this after recent software updates and videos showing dangerous use. Several Tesla owners who have been receiving access to the full self-driving beta software have posted videos of the feature at work. While none of them have shown accidents, several have shown near misses that could have been extremely dangerous. A new study found that consumers' transition to all-electric vehicles in the EU and UK is inevitable. Reported by Business Green, the study assesses the rate of EV adoption, market conditions, and regulatory landscapes across the European Union auto markets. The study estimates EV sales would achieve over 50% market share, surpassing internal combustion engine vehicles as the most sought-after options as early as the year 2025. It also predicts almost all car sales will be EV by 2035 and notes the price parity could very well be achieved more quickly than 2028. While this is only a study of 14,000 consumers scattered around Europe, it should represent some optimism for the old world EV sales. Volkswagen sold more battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles than they ever have before. And actually 7% of all VW badge cars had a plug. 
Volkswagen's most popular fully electric model is the ID.4, which topped the electric charts in Sweden, Denmark, Finland, and Ireland. Volkswagen delivered 119,650 ID.4s globally, with 17,000 of them finding homes in the U.S. The ID.4 was followed by the ID.3, with 76,000 deliveries, and the E-Up model, with about 41,500 deliveries. BMW Group posted year-over-year -year sales growth of more than 8%, and in the electric realm, sales of fully electric vehicles rose more than 133%. The total was 103,855 units. The battery electric Cooper SE made up nearly a third of Cooper's sales, at least in the three-door category. With the iX3 vehicles offering hybrid and all-electric models, nearly 1 in 10 of the iX3s were fully electric. This year, we can expect more electric car growth from BMW thanks to the launch of the iX and the i4 models late last year and followed up by the BMW 7 Series, X1, and the refreshed Mini Cooper SE. In today's community comment, Alex McKenna says, quote, I think the Romans drove on the left like we still do in England. It was Napoleon that decided to do otherwise, I seem to recall. I actually looked it up real quick, and you're right. Archaeological evidence does suggest that Romans rode on the left side of the road. If this practice did occur, it was likely only done when passing, or adjacent to cities, since distant travelers and traders most likely went wherever the road was most stable. In the West, the Roman roads were a major part of expanding the vast empire, moving not only goods and trade, but information, taxes, labor, and religion. The Roman roads were certainly a big leap forward for technology, but other roads existed in other parts of the world as well. In China, roads were commonplace, but didn't reach the same veneration as they did in the West. China's first major highway project was launched during the first emperor of the Qin, and at some points it was massively wide. If the construction of this highway is anything like the other projects from the Qin, it was done to showcase the might of the newly established empire. I'm confident that a cultural norm of traveling on one side of the road did exist in China because they used sailed wheelbarrows that limited visibility as far back as around 550 AD. I'm going to guess that the guy pushing against the wind took out his sail to warn the blind guy on the other side of the road. In the New World, the Incan Empire built a marvel of a road system, but it was unclear which side of the road they crossed on. I think there could be an answer to this somewhere. The Incan Road had a system of runners who were relaying information and possibly perishable goods across this lengthy road. I'm willing to bet they had a procedure to use one side of the road in more populated areas, but whether it was a left or right, I'm not too sure. Don't get me started on ancient history because it's hard to get me off the subject. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.